Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Dear that's listener. That's your cue. Thank you, Becca. <laughs> <laughs> Dear listener, today's going to be a good day, and here's why. Because today, we're going way down, Hades town, way down onto the ground. I'm Becca. And I'm Eenie, and this is Sincerely Us, a podcast for the casual musical theater fan. What are we talking about today, Eenie? We are talking about Hades town, the original Broadway cast album. Because we are so behind the time. Yeah, I know. This came out like a month ago, July 26th, 2019. So yeah, like a month ago, yeah. exactly a month ago. Crazy. Whoa. No, yesterday was the 27th. Today's the 28th, isn't it? Today's the 26th. Oh, today's the 26th? Today's huh. the 26th. Huh. Today being Monday that we're recording it, not Wednesday when you're listening to this. Which is the 28th. Wow. Wow. I wish that I had wow, said wow, that. Wow, wow, wow. Like, Wow, wow, wow. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> um, I wish that I had known that. And it wasn't just a coincidence. <laughs> um, so Becca and I had, I think, other than the um, Tony's performance, I have not listened to any of Hades Town, or I have not um, watched a bootleg or <laughs> listened to any kind of media or any other like um, clips from the show until I listened to the cast album for the last like three days straight <laughs> over and over and over again I've only listened I've only listened to it one way through okay because I like and I am see I'm one of those people that I am so I don't want to say dumb but that's the first thing that comes to mind <laughs> you're not dumb I'm not very I know but I'm not very good at like analyzing things without discussing it with someone so I used to hate when our teacher would make us read like Romeo and Juliet even though I love theater because I didn't understand it unless it was like a lecture or a discussion class if that makes sense. Gotcha. So I kind of wanted to just listen to it once through and then have a discussion uh, because I am so confused. There are so many characters in this show. Um, not really. There are a lot of voices on this <laughs> There album. are, there are. There, there are a lot of voices. Um, so I listened to it the first time and... Um, I made it the whole way through and I was just like, I don't know what I just listened to. I know that there was a lot of energy. I really like the voices on it, but I have no idea what's going on. I don't know who is who and what is going on. So that's when I started it over again. And um, it was funny because the second time I listened to it, I was in the car with my mom and my mom's like, you know, this is really catchy, but I have no idea what's going on. I can't follow the show at all. I can't follow what's happening. And since it was my second time listening through, I was listening to the lyrics a lot more closely so I was able to yeah. catch a lot more and um I think I have the gist of what happens in this show and it ends very sadly I mean it's a Greek tragedy it is it's really sad mm -hmm. so the only the only actor that I know from this at all is the is the girl that plays Eurydice and that's only because I follow George Salazar hi I'm Becca Edo. <laughs> I love George Salazar <laughs> Um, and he, I know that she is, uh, Filipino and she is Hispanic because George Salazar and Joral, what's his last name from, um, Percy Jackson, they both post about her, um, because they're also Asian American. Um, yeah. And I, and I believe that Joral is Hispanic as well. I don't know. But, um, that's the only reason, the only thing I know about any of these actors is that the lead woman, you're going to see is Eva, or a Eva, or her name. Um, Eva Noblesada. It's that. I'm not going to... This isn't going to be a Javier <laughs> one where I try. Okay. Um, yeah, she, according to Wiki, she has a Filipino dad and a Mexican-American mom. Which I think is so cool how much, like, how many roles that people of color are now getting on Broadway. It makes me so happy! Um, for sure. And the... Um, the guy who plays Hermes, um, Andre De Shields, is a person of color, and he's actually like in his seventies. Like he's an older dude. That's awesome. So I love that for him as well, and he won a Tony. Well, he probably deserves it if he's seventy and still on Broadway. <laughs> for real, no. But I mean, after listening to this cast album, for well, yeah. sure he deserved that Tony. Holy crap! Yeah, that's why. That's why I was like that. We are so behind the times because it like didn't sweep the Tonys. It isn't Hamilton, but it definitely like got a ton of awards. Yeah, it was nominated for 14 and it won eight. 
So yeah, yeah, that's pretty Killing awesome. It. So I like loved this album. I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I did. I know that I kind of struggled through it the first listen. So um, mm-hmm. just just because I have you know a s- slight ADD, I think, um, especially when it comes to music. Um, but I I really enjoyed it. Um, it's very upbeat, very high tempo, very high energy. Even the ballads are like super um, like full, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of my favorite songs on the album is a ballad, and I get that. It's a very... Songbird is definitely... Oh, Songbird. As upbeat as you were talking about. <laughs> For real. Um, so, yeah. So, this is the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. Eurydice? Yes. Eurydice? I think it's just Eurydice. 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 <laughs> Eurydice. That's how it's spelled. Yep. But it's told like in like I'm assuming like the twenties, kind of like a like a uh Great Depression era. I don't know, it's very jazzy, mm-hmm. very horn heavy. It made me think of New Orleans. Yeah, it's like it's very like like that, very jazzy, very bluesy, very um big band sound. Um right. I have not looked up the wiki, like as far as like synopsis, I don't I have not looked up any of the facts of the show. I'm going straight by what I've listened to. Um, so if I get anything wrong, I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, this is everything that I've been able to interpret from listening to the cast album. I also really like that the writer, she did the music, the lyrics, and the book. All a woman. Yep. Anais Mitchell. We love a queen. She's so cool. She's awesome. And apparently she, now I'm on the wiki, and apparently um, she toured with it in Massachusetts in 2007. 13-year-old me, man, missing out. <laughs> I could have gone to that. Yeah, you could have. <laughs> Yeah, this is this has definitely been like a I guess a roller coaster of a show because she started in two thousand six and then didn't get on yeah. Broadway until last year or so or this year. Um, they I know that there was a an album that released before this album. Yeah, in two thousand ten. I hadn't heard that. Me either. I literally I knew of Hades Town. I didn't know what any if it was anything it was about. Um, and then all of a sudden it won all these Tonys and I was like, hmm, maybe I should be paying attention. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is how I feel like a lot of the stuff I get into, how that happens. Same. Um, okay, so do you want to just like go track by track? How do you want to do this? I don't know, because this is our first time doing something like this. Um, I just, so before we get into that. I am a very, like, visual person, so sometimes just listening to an album is really hard for me, but I thought it was so interesting that the way that I pictured it in my head, because I didn't know what any of the actors looked like, I didn't really know anything about the set design or anything like that. I know it's, like, very, like, black and brown and red, like, I know that that's kind of the idea, but other than that, I didn't know anything about it, and in my head, while I was, like, driving, because that's mainly where I listen to music, um... I pictured the style of the bad guy from Princess and the Frog. That's how I pictured Hades. Dr. Facilier. Yep. And then, but I pictured it in, like, that kind of style mixed with the Deathly Hallows scene in Deathly Hallows when it's, like, the cartoon. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Yeah. So, like, like, the 2D animation, like, like, stick figure cartoon thing? Yeah. So, it was, like, those two combined. And so, but, like, with that color scheme... And it was one of the first times that that had ever happened to me because it's such a, like, it's about mythology and it's about a story that's been told for hundreds of years that that was the only way my brain could, like, compute it not being, like, real people because it's about gods and stuff. Yeah. Um, so that was just a little fun fact that when I was listening to it today, I just, while we're talking about that, know that that's how I pictured <laughs> this whole thing because I don't know what the cast looks like. <laughs> I had seen, like I said, I saw the performance on the Tonys, so I kind of got, like, mm. the gist of what they were going for, and I, I think I'm right. on the nose when I say, like, very uh, Great Dep- great Depression era, like, very industrial, mm. um, like, it seems like they kind of brought it into the 1920s kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm on the nose, I think I'm right about that. I hope I'm right about that. If I'm not, it sucks. We're gonna watch, we're gonna watch it either, like, see it or watch a bootleg and be like, wow. We suck. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully but, not. Oh, we didn't even explain this. Um, our whole... So, 
across the couple of ep- the eight episodes we've done, we've been trying to try different things. And the thing that we're trying with this episode is trying to figure out what a story is happening in a show without seeing the show or um, like reading, really reading about it, like any seeing one performance or knowing a synopsis, like basically nothing. So we want to see how the music speaks to us and conveys the story without the visuals. And so that was kind of our idea with doing, with covering Hades Town, because it was one of those, sh- it was one of the only shows, I guess, that we didn't know hardly anything about. Like, I literally knew the tune to Way Down to Hades Town, because probably, I don't know where it came from. It was in my head, though, when I heard the song. <laughs> um, but other than that, I knew nothing about this show, other than it was about Greek gods, which, one of my interests. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, same. Again, like, when I watched the Tonys, I had heard of it. Um, I knew that, like, everybody was enjoying seeing it, and I Mm -hmm. knew that it was about Greek mythology, and that's the end of where I knew. And when they performed it, it was just like, okay, that's not what I imagined. I imagined people in, like, (laughs) you know, like, Greek mythology, people in togas, and, like, I was like, this is not what I pictured. So, um... Yeah, I really, really enjoyed this interpretation of this story. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, I'm, I'm kind of addicted to the um, cast album now. So, yay for me. What else is new? I know, right? <laughs> when we decided to cover this, I remember um, both of us like started. We were texting each other right before we started listening to it, and then. We got like 30 minutes in and I remember both of us being like, did we, did you know this is two and a half hours long? (laughs) So there are so many songs. I'm really glad because I'm assuming that this is a very um, Hamilton-esque where... an opera. Yeah, that it's just all the music. There's not really any speaking in between. I, again, I could be wrong because I haven't seen it. Um, But it is a very long cast album. So I'm assuming that the talking in between is very minimal. Yeah. Because there's only, like, what, a scene and a half that's missing from Hamilton? Yeah, that's about it. Just, I was going to say, basically, when they say Lawrence is dead, and when they say Peggy is dead. Yeah, I mean, there's, like, little in-between scenes, but it's, like, those are the only two, like, key things that you miss from not listen from, that are not on the cast album. Well, the only reason I knew that is because one of my friends listened to it for the first time, and they were like, what happened to Peggy? And I was like, you don't find out on the cast album, but she died. <laughs> she just becomes like, Mariah really Reynolds somehow. <laughs> Yeah, I only know because I read the Hamilton. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, is that what we're doing? Is it, are we gonna go like song by song? Yeah. So I have I have a couple notes just on like the first ten songs, and that's it. Because then I started driving. Um. Yeah. And that I'm, would be I'm about, dangerous. So the first song on the cast album is "Road to Hell." Um, and this is yeah definitely like an introduction song. Like it, hey, mm-hmm. you you. Find out that hate, um, not Hades. Hermes is the one that's narrating this whole thing, and yeah. um, he legitimately is introducing everyone. He introduces the Fates. He introduces um, Orpheus. He introduces Eurydice. He introduces himself. He explains that they're basically like in a train town, and what I have in my head is like a subway stop. And they're all just, like, oh, street really? performers. Because, like, you hear all of Ooh. the horns and you hear, like, uh, like this yeah. whole thing. And, like, for whatever reason, like, that's what I have in my head. That's so funny. I pictured, like, a regular train. I mean, sure. But I think... Okay, so I grew up in the country. And there's a song from Tr- Trush, Josh Turner, called Long Black Train, which is a very similar idea. Um, it's about... The music video is about, like, people standing in front of a train, and if the train takes you, then you go to hell, and if it doesn't, then you're, you go to heaven. Um, Wow. Which is, like, the essential idea. Oh, yeah. It's called, it's about the devil. (laughs) Um, So I think that that may have influenced this, because it's the same kind of idea. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was the, this was the first song where I was like, "Does this take place in New Orleans?" Because that's what it makes me think of. Yeah. I mean, I can I can definitely see it. Maybe not as a subway and as like an actual train because he does have like this like train mm-hmm. whistle. Like there's you hear the Ooh. actual like train horn, so that makes more sense. But that's still kind of like the the scene Idea. that I have in my head is that like all of these all of these characters are just like street performers and they're like dancing or they're like I love that. like that's what I have in my head and I really hope I'm right about that and if I'm not it's fine. I love that. I love it so much. 
And he straight up tells you, like, Hermes straight up tells you in the first song, like, this is a tragedy, so... So buckle up. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the first, you get, I mean, the 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 f- beginning of the song is just um, horns, and it, it, like, brings in the beat, and it's just, it's so energetic, and it's so jazzy, and I love it. I thought it was great. Um, and the guy that plays Hermes, his voice is so good. It's mm-hmm. very soulful, very, like, jazzy, bluesy. Yeah. It, I literally, one of my only notes is makes me want to groove. And, like, that's how the whole album is. Like, I just want, I literally was dancing in my seat the whole time. Same. And it's a good setup for the whole show, yeah. I think. Okay, so the next song is uh, Any Way the Wind Blows. So, I think it's mainly the Fates singing. Yeah, that's what I got, too. And it's kind of like, um... I think it's just the continuation of the introduction. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wrote down too. Okay, yeah, and and there, it's also kind of describing the actual weather and like the scene, I guess, like because mm-hmm. um, metaphorically, anyway, the wind blows, but also actually, um, it seems like they're having issues with the weather. Yeah, the harmonies in the song are great. I mean. All of these performers, all of these singers are insanely talented. I don't, they, I don't really have much to say about it, just that it's awesome. What I think is interesting, and this might just be like, I don't want to say it, I, I don't think it's a trope per se, but something that's really interesting to me is the fact that a lot of, a lo- a lot of musicals and like literature in general have like this, I guess it is a trope, this trope of like three women, like Greek chorus mm-hmm. kind of setup. So, like, we had it in Little Shop. Um, obviously, it's in Hercules because they're playing basically the same characters. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't know. I think it's so interesting where it's always these, like, three belty women. Yeah. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I, want, I wonder where that started. Like, I wonder if it started with the story of Orpheus and, and Eurydice. Like, I wonder if that's where I mean, it started in theater and story. I think there's three fates in Greek mythology to begin with. No, there is. So that's kind of yeah. where the number three comes into it, why there's always three. Um, mm-hmm. But as far as the musicality of all of it, I don't know. Yeah, I love it, though. Oh, I do, too. I have one of the lines written down. People turn on you just like the wind. Everybody is a fair weather friend. That line that's was just, one. like, great. I was just like, wow, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, she's been trying to put this on for since, like, 2006, so, like... She is just killing it. Yeah, that was one of my favorite lines from that that song. Um, So then, like, continuing on with the introductions is Come Home With Me, which is when Orpheus Mm. actually meets Eurydice for the first time. And that's when we learn it's it's supposed to be, like, springtime. Yeah. Because they're talking about the flowers blooming. Well, what I understood is that there there hasn't been spring. And Orpheus is trying, is basically this musician that is trying to write like the perfect song to bring spring back. Uh huh. Uh, what else do I have written down here? And then you find out a little bit more about Orpheus that Hermes is kind of like his fatherly figure. Like he says, uh, Hermes says that Orpheus is a son of one of the fates, um, who was a friend of his. And Mm -hmm. you don't really, he never says like, oh, like, that's his son or anything, but he definitely seems to have like taken him under his wing and like, kind of like looking out for him. So then he introduces him to Eurydice. And um, yeah, so you find out Orpheus is like this musician and Eurydice has like all these trust issues and is like poor (laughs) and like literally just trying to survive and find food and warmth. I kind of, um, so... I relate everything back to, like, modern things because it helps me understand. Yeah. Um, I know you're not a huge Taylor Swift fan. Oh, God. Have you ever heard her song, Mine? Yes. Where, okay, so it's about a girl that has, like, tons of trust issues. Actually, hold and a boy on, that hold tries on, to hold help. on, hold on. It is not that I am not a Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> I was a Taylor Swift fan when I was younger. I just feel in my heart of hearts that while I have grown up, Taylor Swift has not um, I could, I, listen, everyone has their own opinions. I know you love her. I'm not about to get into this argument with you. Um, we're not going to have an argument. Lover is great, though. Say all you want about reputation. That's fine. Lover's great. That's the new one? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't listened to it. Well, anyway, that song, Mine. <laughs> okay. I know that one. like, I think of their relationship. By the way, that was, um, filmed, that music video, filmed in Maine. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, that's how I think of, like, 
there's that whole line about like you took wow i'm such a bad taylor swift fan i can't think of any of the lyrics right now but like it was basically the idea of you took a a, this is gonna bother me so much but i'm just gonna do like paraphrasing i'm not even gonna look it up it's not that it's not that important but (laughs) you took like a a girl who had like tons of daddy and trust issues and like oh no that's gonna bother me hold on (laughs) that's really gonna bother me i know uh I know, I know exactly this the is line. Such great like, podcasting. Oh my god, we're, such good podcasting. We're terrible people. We're so good at this. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I feel so bad for you. Made um, a rebel of a careless man's careful daughter. That one. <laughs> um. <laughs> god, that was gonna bother me. It was more the idea of the fact that she has like such trust issues, but Orpheus wants to be like, "Hey, I love you." Orpheus is. I can't believe I'm about to say this. Orpheus is Bay. <laughs> I love Orpheus. Okay, so it's hilarious because, like, the intro to this song is Hermes, like, kind of talking to Orpheus, like, hey, here's this girl, don't act crazy. And, like, yeah. he, like, walks like, up to her and he's like, hi, I'm Orpheus. And she's like, who are you? And he's like, the man who's gonna marry you. I'm like, Yeah, Whoa. literally, like, Hermes is like, be cool. Be, just be Turn chill it on. for two seconds. <laughs> yeah, like, and he's like, uh, nah, I wrote you this love song. I love you so much. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's when you find out that Orpheus is, like, this musician or whatever, and one of the, yeah. like, he's telling her, um... The song is literally called Come Home With yeah, Me. Yeah, I know. That is the least chill <laughs> phrase I've ever heard in my life. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so um one of one of my favorite lines is like he's telling her that he's a musician and that he sings and that he plays like the lyre yeah. and he's like she's like, Oh, a lyre and a player. And I'm just like, <laughs> Oh my god, that's amazing. Dude, Eurydice is like she is so sassy I know. and just like, all right, boy, like, come on. This ain't this is not happening. It's fine. Oh my god, it was so good. So whatever. Um that's what that song is. It's just them like, kind of introducing, um, getting the introduction, I guess. And then at the end, he mm-hmm. plays her, like, the song that he's working on to make spring come. Yeah. And apparently it's this, like, all-powerful song. Because, like, any time anyone listens to it, they just, like, swoon. Yeah. <laughs> so she obviously swoons. Well, yeah. It's Orpheus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Orpheus <laughs> is bae. <laughs> um so yeah that that's um come home with me and then yeah. the next song is called the wedding song no um, which... chill he has no chill okay well actually <laughs> um it is not orpheus and eurydice's wedding eurydice's e we'll just call her e <laughs> sure her, you her name would be you actually <laughs> <laughs> it's not their wedding. I know. Um, this kind of takes a break in like the story and yeah. explains what's going on. Yeah. Um, with the whole weather situation, and it actually explains, um, Hades's marriage with Persephone. Persephone. Yeah. Um, and like this arrangement that they have that six months of the year that she's on Earth and six months of the year that she goes, you know, down to Hades Town. <laughs> That's actually my favorite. One of my favorite. Uh, Greek stories is like the whole idea of Persephone being like this wonderful flowery I don't know how to explain what I'm saying but like this wonderful like girly beautiful woman yeah. that has to spend six months down in Hades Town, and she's like boy I'll give you half of the year yeah. that is it you know well I it's funny because like I I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. Like I don't know a lot about Greek mythology. It's never been mm-hmm. something that I've been like super interested in. Um most uh-huh. of my knowledge of Greek mythology is all pop culture based. So like mm-hmm. Hercules the movie, you know, like Troy, um any kind of movie or anything, I have never really been interested in Greek mythology uh-huh. as a whole. So I like the thought of someone being married to Hades is just, like, insane to me. But this song kind of brings out the romantic side of, like, why they fell in love and how they fell in love. And and what their... The symbolism of this, this whole thing, at least to me, is that everybody is struggling up on Earth you know, it's like, I, like I, I, I keep circling back to the Great Depression. Like, no one can find work. No one can find food. Everyone is struggling. And then Hades Town, obviously, like hell, um, is actually like this industrial, like, pe- like people have jobs and people like have shelter. And yeah, they can't leave. You know, they're stuck there for the right. rest of their lives. But they're, they also never die because they're 
already dead. Um, well, it kind of reminds me of like wartime in like our not even just country, but like in our world in general. Like when there's when there's war, um, our our country prospers. So like some of the some of the greatest times uh, come before and after depressions. Yeah, because at, it, they come after because we have to like dig ourselves out. But also, usually there's a, after a depression mm-hmm. comes a war. So if you notice, like in, like you were talking about the Great Depression. Yeah. Um, right after that came World War One. Two. two? After is two. Two? After is two. Okay. Before <laughs> is one. After is two. Okay. You got this. Yeah. So it's that same idea. So like, obviously the, you know, if, if Earth is struggling or if like above living it up on top, like going with that. If that is struggling, then hell or Hades town is going to be prospering because if they're struggling, there's going to be a lot more dead people. There's going to be a lot more like, I don't know. I don't know what word I'm looking for. There's going to, there's going to be a lot more suffering. If that makes sense. Kind of like Dementors, how they feed off of like depression. Mm -hmm. Um, If there's a depression up on top, Hades towns is going to be thriving because that's the kind of stuff that they look for and stuff like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So, so it's the same kind of idea. And I think that that's probably what she was going for when she was writing this was, was, was kind of being an allegory to, to our world. Like with one area is struggling, then the other area is going to be prospering. Right. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I get that. Um, but yeah, so, uh, what were we talking about? Where, what song are we on? We're about to lead into the epic one. Oh, wait, I messed that up then. Why? Because Epic One is the story of Persephone and Hades. Yeah, you're right. I think I just skipped the wedding song in my notes. That's okay. I don't remember what the wedding song is about. All I said was the wedding, the song part makes me cringe. It's definitely not finished. Because that was what the wedding song was about, is he couldn't finish the song. Oh, so then if that's the part of him singing her, like, his song, then that's... Right. Okay. So, you just put it with okay, Come I Home With Me. Yeah, I just, I, I mixed the two. So that's the... Okay, I remember now. <laughs> um, so the wedding song is him basically trying to convince her to be with him, if that makes yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. Um, because they're both kind of impoverished. Like I said, it's in my head, it's very Great Depression-y. They're both mm-hmm. struggling. They're both starving, whatever. And he's a musician. It's not like he's making money. Um, and <laughs> she is definitely looking for a, like stability because she's right. never had that and she that's what she wants. So he plays her this song that he's been working on and swoon she's con- automatically convinced even though yeah the song is definitely not finished it's very rough drafty right um and yeah it is what it is yeah um and then leading into epic one that is i think that's one of my favorite songs on the album just because i am obsessed with orpheus's voice obsessed yes i love Oh yeah, because he's voice. the one he's the one that's telling this whole story Right. Um, in Epic One about Persephone and Hades. Yeah. His voice is really good. I don't know. What is this? What is this guy's name? Reeve. Reeve. Yeah. Spider-Man. Uh, Reeve Carney, who is the musical Spider-Man. I love him. He's such a good voice. And also, I really like the fact that his voice is so different from everyone else's voice. Like, his voice is much more lilty and much more, uh, I don't want to say musically, but like, it's just, it's, it's a lot more like floaty. Whereas yeah. everyone else's voices are much hard, harsher. It's kind of like a rough voice. Okay, so there are a ton of songs on this cast album. Oh, there's so over 40. <laughs> I think, no, there is 40. Oh, there's exactly 40? Exactly I thought there was 42. 40. It's exactly 40. Um, so I think we're going to start bunching them up, kind of. Yeah, so let's just let's just hit on, cause because we've already talked about like the characters and how the show's set up, let's just hit on some of the songs that we like really stuck out to us. Oh, okay. For sure. You go first. Um, obviously way down Hades Town, but that's like the the song. Um, but one of the ones that like really surprised me, I really liked Limited Up on Top. Um, I love like the metaphor with the train and like that was like I didn't really get the train thing until like I didn't fully get the train thing until Limited Up on Top happened, like how they're getting on and off going to Hades Town, um, with like the river sticks and stuff. Yeah, Living It Up on Top is um Persephone singing the whole thing, yeah. basically, right? Yeah, she's awesome. Her voice is great. I think um my favorite uh, song on here is Wait for Me, and yeah, definitely Wait for Me. And then I'm sure there's a reprise because you know all it of them. Happens in all all tragedies and epics. All of them. 
Um, I also, it's... I also really like that this is a this is this is an like a Greek epic story, and I really like that it's kind of meta in that she names some of the songs Epic One and Epic Two, yeah, and like stuff like that. I'm like, wow, that's right on the nose. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, and and like this whole the the story of every like this whole story is pretty cool. Like, I I don't think I ever knew about Orpheus and Eurydice before this, so like, um. The way that they played this was just like I'm super interested. I want to go see it. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's this this kid who just is like a musician. It's just like, yeah, sure, I'm gonna go to hell to rescue my girlfriend. Yeah, that sounds great. I was like, okay, sure, <laughs> this sounds great. And also, you might die. Actually, right. <laughs> um, what other songs were good? I mean, this entire album is really good. Songbird definitely because we talked about this a little bit. I believe it was last episode when we were talking about, or maybe the episode before, when we were talking about how songs go back into each other, mm-hmm. like how they mix. I really like the melody and like the theming of Songbird because it comes up a lot in Act Two. Um, of course, I don't know the names of the songs right off the top of my head, but when I was listening to it, I was like, hey, hey, that's that song. I like that song. Like, I just think it's so interesting, especially when I think it was Hades um, was talking about needing a canary because... It, it's really interesting thinking about like miners about how they used to have that canary that if they smelled gas, the bird would stop singing. Yeah. And like that was that whole metaphor. And I thought that that was so interesting bringing it into Hades town because it's that same idea of hope and of um like, like life, I guess. Yeah. Which is funny because it's Hades town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I was surprised at that song yeah because like that's the part of the story where Hades and um Persephone have like had a fight and Persephone basically just said that she wasn't going back she's like peace yeah and so he's basically like I'm gonna find someone who's gonna appreciate the things that I give them right (laughs) and he convinces uh Eurydice to go down to Hades town with him Mm -hmm. like by offering her stability by offering her you know like whatever and this guy's voice is so deep I love it (laughs) It was, like, oh, vibrating in my car. <laughs> my God. Like, wow. I was not expecting it. I was yeah. not ready for it. And yeah. I loved every second of it. <laughs> I also... It's so interesting when we were talking about it being so upbeat, because this is such a sad story. Oh, my um, God. For real. <laughs> we were talking about it being so upbeat. This song seems so positive and so light and stuff. And it's literally a Predator song. Like, he's literally... Luring her yeah. to hell. <laughs> like, actually. Actual <laughs> hell. Yeah. It's so, it's bad. Yeah, so it's it's not even it's not even like the the light notes that you think it would be because it's about a songbird, quote like supposedly. It's yeah. It's him being like, No, I need a little ray of sunshine down here. Come hang out with me. You're great. <laughs> yeah. And then it's funny because like then Eurydice gets there and like instantly regrets her decision. Well yeah. <laughs> because it's actual hell. Yeah. And um oh my god. Uh, what's the song that he's singing? Um, like while he's walking. Uh, I think it's just the reprise <laughs> of "Way Down the Hades Town." Um, well, even even thinking of the um, they're all mixing together in my head now. Yeah, me too. It's because they. It, it's because it's so genius the the way that it kind of like Les Mis, like I was talking about how it's all like repeats itself, like it bounces back and forth. Um. Which is great, but also it makes it hard to talk about it. Yeah. Um, like, we talked about Act 1 finales last episode. I loved the end of Act 1 in this, why we build the wall. I think that was so interesting. Um, I was um, not ready for it. Yeah. I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let's just, let's just do this. Listen, let me listen to this entire song about building a wall right now. Yeah, it's great. That's not what I want to do. Yeah, literally. Um, but it but it is a, it is a great song. And because we don't discuss politics on here, but it is a great not. song. <laughs> it is a great song. Um, and I also like when we talked about it a little bit last week about how the beginning of Act Two, um, sometimes mirror like not mirrors. It's like the opposite. I really liked Our Lady of the Underground being like a call back to to why we build the wall. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. Again, Persephone is a queen. So, um, anytime that she has a solo, I'm just, like, in awe and love and so happy. But I just think that that was such, like, a nice bringing us back into um, Act 2. What did you think of, I guess it would be Epic 3? 
Which one is that one? Um, I don't know which song it is, but it's when he like actually sings like his full song when he sings it to Hades. Like, what did you think about it? I think that it was overhyped. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's supposed to be this song that like saves Fixes the world. Everything. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I mean it's Orpheus like he's great like (laughs) I'm sure that there's like this big thing that happens in the show and like it's this big huge epic thing but just listening to the music I was like all right (laughs) I was the same way and it's like right after he sings it Mm -hmm. apparent like in the next song Hades is talking about how he was like touched and like and Persephone is talking about how she was touched and like it caused like this huge riot in the underworld because of all the hope that it gave everyone and I was just like really that song (laughs) like that one (laughs) that's it like that one that song out of all of the songs that have been (laughs) sung that one I guess it I guess it's kind of like um I heard all the time bringing this to Dear Evan Hansen, because of course, um, I had heard all the time about how, uh, which one was, it? I think it was too big, too small. It used to like make people sob. And like, I love that song now, but like, I was just like, all right, I get it. It's cool. It's a good song. And then I saw it and it like destroyed me. So I think I'm hoping that that's it in the show. Like I'm hoping it's that song where, where you listen to the, to the, um, the song and you're just like, yeah, all right. But then you listen, you see it, you see it live, and you're just like, Ugh. <laughs> I mean, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Like I, I was just, I was not, I was, uh, I wasn't impressed. And but yeah, so it causes this whole like thing, and then the fates are all like, hey, Hades, you have to decide whether you let him go, right? And you're looked at as soft, or if you keep him here, then he's used as a martyr. Like, make up your mind. And Hades like basically creates this like horrible test for him that like broke my heart because he failed yeah (laughs) spoiler i didn't know this yeah (laughs) and i understand that at the beginning of this entire album they're like hey this is a tragedy i was still waiting for everything to turn out fine at the end and it did not (laughs) no i was sad no it's because we're used to disney disney makes everything good at the end (sighs) yeah i guess (laughs) but there's actually, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to bring it up anyway. There's actually a moment like this in the Percy Jackson series where this exact thing happens. And I wasn't aware. Like exactly because it's the exact characters that we're talking about? or like... No. Like, okay. like um, Hades gives Percy an option like this. I mean, it turns out fine. It's, it's a kid's series. But um, when I was listening to it, I was like, why does this sound familiar? And then immediately after I listened to Percy Jackson, the musical, which made me think of Percy Jackson, I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's Greek mythology. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's given this, like, task where he has to, like, navigate his way out of hell and not look back to make sure that Eurydice is behind him the entire way. And, like, he almost makes it out. And he's, like, mm-hmm. almost there. And then he has, like, this panic Mm -hmm. and he turns around and then your disease is now like stuck in hell for the rest of her life Mm -hmm. that poor girl it's always greek mythology man is always about men messing up and women (laughs) taking i mean absolutely not because she shouldn't have gone with hades in the first place i mean i agree it is definitely her fault he went to go (laughs) rescue her completely her fault she shouldn't have gone in the first place oh yeah it's like the adam and eve story it's fine it's like the same kind of idea um where like, they're both in the wrong. But also, Greek mythology, a lot of it is stuff like that, where it's, like, the failed tests are always in the name of love or whatever. Yeah. Something dumb. Oh, my God. And it sucks because, like, then the second to last song is Hermes doing, like, a slow down version of... Um, Road to Hell. Of Road to Hell. And yeah. it's literally him starting this story all over again. Yeah. And I'm just like... It's genius. Uh, my heart. I know. And then it ends with Persephone. Well, it's Persephone and yeah. Eurydice. Right. Like, toasting um, Orpheus. Because, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, regardless of the fact that he failed his test, like, he still fixed everything on Earth and brought the seasons back and, like, fixed um, Persephone and Hades. So, I mean, I guess the it's greater sacrifice. good and all of that bullshit. But, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I guess. They didn't end up together in the end. I just think that, like, the show is so smart. Like, it, like, all of the metaphors, all of the musicality, the way that it, it's restarting again at the end, like, it's just so smart. 
I love smart theater. Oh, I do get, too. I'm not going to hate on Mamma Mia, but we get like such... I'm not going to hate on Mamma Mia, <laughs> but I'm going to hate on Mamma Mia. <laughs> we get such dumb shows like jukebox musicals i do not like i think they're dumb mama mia is a jukebox musical we're not gonna have this discussion right now okay we will but- have a discussion on jukebox musicals because mama mia is not the only jukebox musical i'm aware i don't like any of them i understand that you don't but i do <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be our first fight on air <laughs> oh hell yeah it is <laughs> Well, and it, what's hilarious I is the first show. I love Rock of Ages. Like, Where? love Rock of Ages. I've never seen Rock so of Ages. Even. So you may, hmm. you may prove myself may hmm. prove me wrong. However, um, the first show I was ever in was a jukebox musical. And I loved that experience. It just was not a good show. Because I like, I don't even really like how. What show was it? Uh, Back to the 80s. Okay. It was like a ton of 80s songs. It's the only reason I know a lot of lyrics to 80s songs. Because um, my parents were much more like 60s and 70s people. Oh, um, no, my mom was a large hair 80s music yeah. lover. I mean, our parents are from two different eras. So <clears throat> true. Makes sense. Um, but, and so I just, I just like creative and smart storytelling. Um, and I like how she took like such a great story of Orpheus and Eurydice and just made it so different from everything we've seen before because there literally is a musical called Orpheus and Eurydice like and she changed it completely and yeah. I actually I think it came out in like 2012 so it's not an old one um, so she did this before right because she's been working on this since 2006 you said yeah it was supposed to be, it was like a concept album first kind of like Hamilton was <laughs> yes um so I just, I just a weekly weekly reminder that Hamilton exists in case anyone needs it. I mean, I got my hi, I love George Salazar and Percy Jackson, so you can have your hi, I love Hamilton. Um. <laughs> I mean, we already mentioned Hamilton earlier in the episode, so it's fine. It's but, fine. you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, I don't know. I just really love creative storytelling, and I can't wait until we um, talk about the prom. Because one of my favorite YouTuber, Catherine Steele, she's great. Look her up. Um, she, so this isn't even my idea, but she was talking about how the prom was really the, one of the only original story shows that were, that was on the season. Um, most of the stuff that we liked this year were, was based on other things other than like Dear Evan Hansen. Um, so I just really like smart and original storytelling. Well, Dear Evan Hansen wasn't this season, but yeah. It was, yeah, it didn't come out this season, but it was still a part of the season. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I get you. But, like, we we still have Lion King on, we still have Aladdin on, you know, like, all, Hamilton. Like, yeah. it's all based on other no, things. No, and, and Cher, and then right. um, King Kong, and Beetlejuice. And, yeah. But it's it's the same thing this season. They came out with Moulin oh, yeah, Rouge, no. they came out with um, the Percy. Alanis Morissette one. Jagged Little Pill. Um, which we are so excited about because we found a guy on YouTube. I forget. Oh, my God. I Instagram? Forget his name. Instagram. Well, I found him on YouTube first. Remember, he covered oh. Requiem. Oh, my God. Yes, he did. So I'm excited to see, he's going to be in the original cast of Jagged Little Pill, and he's looking it up right now, I assume, because she just pulled out her phone. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> look up his name. Hold um, on. No, I'm, I'm going to look up him. the Jagged Little Pill cast. Cast. You that have, seems like it'll be easier. another one of those situations you have to say his name, because I don't want to butcher it. Yeah. Is it like, is he super yeah. Hispanic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just, I just don't want to butcher it. Um, uh... Continue talking. It's I'll like find Antonio. it. It's Antonio something. Um, well, anyway, we just discovered him and he's going to be in Jagged Little Pill. But I, I just think that while Hades Town is a retelling of another story, I think it's so smart in the way that she did it. Like, it's so smart in putting it in another era and making the characters act the way they do and the metaphors of the train and just like all of that. I just think it's so smart. And while it's a retelling, I, it's so original. Um, and I just, I, I don't know. I just, I just think it's one of those situations where it's a retelling, but it makes it its own. You know, in our, in our land of live actions being made right now, that's just a retelling of the same story. Um, it, it kind of reminds, like, if we're going off that, it kind of reminds me of the 2013 remake of Cinderella. Like, mm-hmm. I, the way that, the way that they retouched other things to make it fit more in our society. Um, and it's kind of how they did with Aladdin. Um, but it isn't just like a carbon copy of 
another show. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like No, that makes sense. And like Moulin Rouge isn't a carbon copy of the movie. Like it's totally I, different. They dropped the first song. I listened to it already. I'm very excited. <laughs> the album comes out next week. By the way, the guy that we're talking about is Antonio Cipriani. Yep, see? <laughs> He's great. Follow him on Instagram. Antonio Cipriani is very easily said in English. I don't want to butcher it. I don't like, I don't, I don't want to butcher anything. Also, Derek Klenna's in this show. I'm super excited for Jagged Little Pill, actually. And hey. again, I love Alanis Morissette because my mom was big hair 80s fan, so... I don't think I know any Alanis Morissette songs. Name one. Ironic. <gasps> Isn't it ironic? Yeah. <laughs> don't you think? I love that song. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, listen, I have a Hispanic co-host, so why would I butcher Hispanic names when I can just have you say them? For practice. Uh, listen, I can say Javier Munoz. Did I say that right? I'm sorry, one more time. Javier Munoz. There it is. Yes. Okay. Whew. You did. I get so nervous every time I sorry, say Sorry, I was looking up more uh, Alanis Morissette songs, like a You Oughta Know, which I'm sure you know. Probably. Um. But I know Ironic. I like that Okay, song. good. I don't know. Okay, so back to Hades Town. <laughs> That's a little tangent. I, I got distracted. Um, man, this cast album is really good. Um, I 100% was not expecting it to like it as much as I did. Mm-hmm. I knew that we had to listen to it because this is what we're doing now. Because theater podcast. So I knew I was going to listen to it. I knew I was going to have opinions on it. I didn't think that they were going to be as positive as they are. Uh-huh. Um, I, I'm i not going to sit here and like nitpick it and say, well, I didn't like this. I didn't like that. I didn't like this because that's not what this podcast is about. No, we're a pretty um, positive podcast unless it's about cats. Or, ju- <laughs> or jukebox musicals, apparently. <laughs> so you're the positive one in this relationship. <laughs> apparently. um but yeah i i think um it's definitely worth a listen Mm -hmm. um maybe two just you know i think for me the first listen was more um like okay let me get through this two and a half hour cast album because (laughs) wow two and a half hours um that's how i felt when i first started listening to hamilton i was like why are there so many songs and there's 36 in that one oh me too (laughs) listen guys Y'all know how I feel about Hamilton. But it was a struggle for me to get through Hamilton, mm-hmm. like, the first two times. Oh, or maybe yeah. three times. And it wasn't... And then I, what I would do is I would, like, start listening to the songs that were, like, super catchy to yeah. me. So I would listen to, like, One Shot. Then I would listen to, like, Burn. And I would listen to, like, What Did I Miss? Mm-hmm. Like, all the super catchy songs. And then, like, I was like, all right, I like these songs. Now I just got to get through the whole thing. And then I, I just fell in love. I mean, I still don't know Act 2 very well. Um, I know Hurricane and Burn really well, but because those are my two favorite songs. And um, speaking of hurricanes, let me check the forecast. Eni lives in Miami. <laughs> you might need a new co-host next week. I'm kidding. It's just a tropical I was storm. Say, don't we say should, that. We should be fine. <laughs> it's just a tropical storm. It's still very far away. And if it hits us, like it'll probably be like a Cat One or a tropical storm. So we'll be fine. Sounds like I me just... talking about nor'easters. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah. Um, so I, what I was saying, like, this is definitely a long cast album. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't judge you. I mean, I'm not going to judge you anyway. I, mean, I don't judge people. But um, it's definitely a struggle to get through the first time. Yeah. Um, but it's really good. And when you start listening to the words and you start, like, catching all the little jokes and all of the little, like, quips and, and just, like, all of the... Ugh, great storytelling and really smart storytelling like within the lyrics it just it hooks you and um yeah i i really liked it and even like like we were talking about with hamilton um if you're going to listen to a couple songs to get you into it um what's it called i just had it hey little songbird one of my favorites like i said definitely listen to that one road to hell is really good and it's the beginning so it's even better um and then what was the other one i was going to living it up on top is just fun um, way down to Hades Town is super catchy. Um, uh, wait for me. I've been singing and like all day, and I've been tweeting about it, and I love it. And that's definitely um one that catches your attention. Um, but yeah, I, I like those are definitely the catchy songs. Yeah. Do you have any other to add to that list? No, those are the ones that like get stuck in my head. Yeah, especially the songbird one. Hey, little songbird. Wait for me is the one that's like, it's an earworm for me. Which is funny because your favorite song from Hamilton is Wait For It. 
I didn't even like. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Wow. <laughs> Every time you kept saying, wait for me, I kept ex- expecting you to say, wait for it. <laughs> I honestly didn't even put that together. I am an idiot. It's That's fine. So <laughs> um, yeah, wow. I'm nothing but predictable. Like, this whole show just makes me want to snap my fingers. Yeah, absolutely. It's because so, it's, it's so jazzy. It really is. I love it. Um, but yeah, I think we definitely are recommending that everybody listen to this because it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But again, it's two and a half hours long. So like, listen to a couple of them if to see if it's your thing. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, and it's definitely not going to be everybody's thing. Because if you don't like jazz, if you don't like, you know, like bluesy songs, then you might not, you might hate it. Right. And that's okay. Um, do you have any other thoughts on it? I just read Hadestown the Musical as Hamilton the Musical. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for me. It's fine. (laughs) People start with H's. Um, So, yeah, I think that's it. Um, If you guys do listen to it, you know, definitely hit us up on Twitter or Instagram at SincerelyUsPod um, or me on Instagram and Twitter at underscore Eeny Meeny. That's I-N-Y-M-E-E-N-Y. My Instagram and Twitter is at Becca Eddowes, B-E-C-C-A-E-D-D-O-W-S. You think I would remember since we've been doing this for nine episodes now. Um, you can follow our beautiful artist that did our art at Synergetic Art on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Love you, Sin. She's great. She also um, liked one of our tweets the other day and I was like, ah, I love her. Um, I recently actually, like, joined a Discord server that she's in, so yeah. I'm, like, interacting with her a lot more. She's great. And she's the sweetest person. I love her. So you guys should go follow her. and For sure. throw money at her, because she's great. And I'm going to leave you with a quote from Mara Isaacs when she accepted the award for Best Musical for Hadestown this year. And I think, it's, I think it really works really well with the theme of Hadestown. And she said, change is possible, and in dark times, hope can come again. Sincerely, us. <laughs> <laughs>